Man of the year, man of the year, man of the year. Welcome to the numero uno friendship podcast in the world. I'm Matt Ritter. Oh, in the world. I'm Aaron Cairo. Oh, we're going global, baby. <laughs> and if you want to see what we have going on, go to our YouTube page. You want to see our faces there. Go to manoftheyearpodcast.com. Get you some summer swag or fall swag or depending on what hemisphere you're in, the weather can be cool and you want you know, more of a sweater type thing. We got those two, I think. Cairo, I sent you a funny article recently about parasocial relationships. And you said, we got to talk about it. So let's talk about it. Should I define what parasocial is before I we dive in? Yeah. So it's a one-sided relationship where one person extends emotional energy, interest, and time. And the other party, the persona, is completely unaware of the other's existence. So we're talking about like sports heroes, musicians, comedians, politicians, reality stars, TikTokers, podcasters, maybe even. <laughs> so it's essentially when you think you have a relationship with a a celebrity or a, a public figure, you know? I think it's, well, I think that's, um, I wanted to talk about that. Some people maybe think it, but I think others form it. I don't know if it's about, is, do you think it's about whether you think you have one or whether you've actually formed a type of relationship that isn't like a well, I guess I'm, I'm, before we even get into that, I'm just, just, just kind of just more flesh out the definition. It's, it's, it's yeah. like, that's what know, I'm asking you. I'm not sure. Oh, well, but it's more that you, uh, you know, uh, Taylor Swift has a breakup and you're talking about it like it happened to somebody that you know. Right, but you don't actually think that you're friends with Taylor Swift in that scenario. Well, I so think there's, different types, of, there's yeah. different types of parasocial ones because I think there's others where you've actually like built it up that you're actually friends with this person or like you know them in some way. Like, like you, your, grasp on, like your grasp on reality depends on like how far into this rabbit hole you are because I think a lot of us have some sort of level of parasocial relationships with celebrities, but I wouldn't even really define them as parasocial because they're not like unhealthy. I think to me, parasocial is like a little unhealthy. Got it. Well, it's like what do you think? If, you, if you follow a baseball player and you know all his proclivities and... I don't consider that parasocial, parasocial to like just know a lot about. Right. Right. Uh, athlete or celebrity that just to me do you no that's fandom fandom right right so i guess what we're saying is parasocial relationship is when you take fandom and you create a actual really a relationship that doesn't actually exist that's not two-sided that you build up through your fandom right would that be your definition of it that it's that it's like one step further than fandom yeah yeah, like super fandom still is within the realm of um, you just like them. Even if you're a super fan, I think you're obsessed in a way of like, you know a lot about them. I think parasocial is when it becomes like an actual relationship that you put effort into. Right. You're putting one-sided effort into it because the other person yeah. gets, doesn't know you exist, doesn't even know you are a person. Right. Right. Now, I guess the question is, since we all have them to some degree, is there anything wrong with it? So you and I were talking offline that uh, comedians have often had parasocial relationships because our performing is very intimate, intimate. Yes. And, you know, when you're at a show, there's just one person. There's not like even a musician or anything like that. And you and that person's bearing their soul. And often you get to meet a comedian, especially if they're on the way up. Feels very accessible. Yes. And authentic. Two things that we like in potential friends. Yes. Right. So yeah. it's, it's, it's actually really funny because when you look at hey, how to make a friend, what are, what are the, what are the vibes that they're putting out? We go, Oh, well, are they vulnerable? Are they, are they showing you that they're open? Are they, you know, are they being vulnerable? Are they authentic? You know, it's like, Oh yeah. The comedians really hit those. I want to be friends with that guy thing. And we, but the funny thing is, both of us have formed actual friendships with fans we met after a show, basically. Yes, yes, and and 
by the way, I'll get into our listener question later because it's related to that. Yeah. But I wonder what percentage of comedians versus like musicians or athletes. I think we're probably on the higher end of the spectrum of like so much more. We're so much more accessible. Right. Converting. But also podcasters. There's all these live podcasts now. I actually think I think live podcasts are maybe one step further towards accept towards accessibility than even comedians. What's a live po- podcast? Like the Ringer guy, the Spotify guy. The, I'm sorry, the Ringer guys, the Pod Save America guys. The oh, when they do know. a show, right? Okay, yeah, I think Got they're it. even like almost more accessible because they're really just themselves. Whereas at least comedians, it's a bit of a persona, and most people actually understand that it's not actually totally you up there. Whereas these like live podcasters are literally just themselves on there. Like versus we, like us, when we do our live show, it's different from the standup that I do and that you do. Yeah, it's it's more us to, to, to our detriment, probably. To our detriment for uh, like opening up the door to parasocial activities. <laughs> parasocial. <laughs> um, do you think so it's that 20- parasocial activities? It's a new yeah, movie? Paras- parasocial activity. That's great. Um, do you think this has got to be a 21st century phenomenon, right? Well, I wonder, right? Like were people following around Babe Ruth? I was going to say Clark Gable. You think like, oh, he's like my best friend. They were like, like staying. I mean, there've always been groupies for athletes for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. They were always like, you go to, you know, like Cleveland, there's people trying to find out what hotel they're staying in and, you know, bands, people, groupies for bands, like the dead. I'm reading this book where the dead is in there. And like, these people were so fully obsessed with them. that Like, it's hard to really imagine like grownups would just like spend months following them around the country. Um, speaking of groupies and thinking about podcasts, have we ever discussed on this show, the uh, New York times article titled from 2023 titled, would you date a podcast, bro? <laughs> no, that's funny. Which is that basically like podcast, like, you know, podcasters sort of like have to hide that they're yeah. podcasters and like on dates, you do, you don't say it because they've got a bad, not necessarily a bad rap is like being. Well, it is a kind of a cliche now that every, every, everybody's got a podcast. Right. Um, so when it comes up, I usually don't, I will bring it up on a date. But once I explain, I mean, we also have a good podcast and also coming right. from- Right, we, we have one that doesn't seem like a narcissistic vanity thing. A little bit like that, but it, no. But it also comes from the greatest friendship tradition of all time, our man of the year yeah. dinner, which when you explain that to a woman, they love it. It's, it's nice, right? It's a nice thing. This, Wait, this, so- Sorry, this guy, in the article, yeah. this guy in the article said, I was on a date in Chicago as a podcaster and I, and I said, oh, I do digital strategy. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's like the um what what are they remember like on The Bachelor there's dating shows where it's clear that like some of the women oh, yeah. are escorts? Like what what do they usually say they are? It's like marketing, sales. Sales, yeah, like um, it's always like some sort of um medical device sales. Yeah. And they never uh, specify what they sell. They can never tell you. It's like, well, what so what device? Little right. of this, little of that. Customer acquisition. Yeah, customer, customer L- acquisition. You, Matt, LA has got to be the king, the, the epicenter of fake jobs. Oh, everyone. Every person I meet. There was a woman on the streets uh, of Larchmont the other day, friend of a friend, was asking my buddy Dan to help set her up. And she goes, all I want is somebody with a real job. And I just scream out, wrong town, honey. <laughs> But by the way, did she have a real job? She was in marketing. I have no idea. Mar- marketing, yeah. It's, a real it's job. always like when you when you scroll through you know, a dating app, obviously you're, you're seeing just occupation. And it's always like, you know, marketing at FabFitFun, marketing at Fabletics, you know, marketing First at Beachbody. That should be your dating demo. I feel like that you should get in on that. Marketing at FabFitFun? Yeah, that's like your future wife. What is that? I don't know. It sounds fun. <laughs> fit and fab. Yeah. No, we we once knew a girl that, that worked at that place. I feel like that's your demo. We need to get you into their office somehow to do like a. We should do a friendship 
something at their office. Bad fit friendship. Bad fit friendship. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I want to get back to I want to get back yeah. to podcasters for a second. So the reason you, you're hitting my my well, you were dissing them, but I'm I want to go back to the point where I th- actually think they're the most accessible because those podcasts, and I think we fall into it with our live pod is they know. Have you heard the term hangout podcasts? No. It's like you feel like you're hanging out with them. So like smart list would be like, you know, you feel like, you're hanging, like you feel like you're hanging out that? with them. I hope, huh? Are we that? I think we are. I was going to say, I hope we fall into that. Okay. Uh, like the rewatchables. These are the types of pods. I feel like, well, obviously with the exception of smart list, cause they're like already super duper famous. You probably feel like you have some sort of relationship with them and it feels like you can go up to them and just be like, Hey, what's up, man. You know, who I feel is the most like, I saw this guy in Larchman. I thought I knew him. It was, it was one of the selling sunset real estate guys. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I was going to walk up to him and be like, I, I know you, right? Like from the neighborhood. And then I realized like, I don't know. I know him from, from Bravo. That is also a very LA thing. Oh, that, did we go to, did you go to the same camp? No, I was on Grey's Anatomy. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, I actually want to get to our listener question a little early. Cause I feel like we're almost jumping it. All right. We'll be right back. Guys, this is asking for a friend. If you have a friendship question or ethical dilemma, send it to us on Instagram, Man of the Year Podcast, and me and Matt will answer it on the show. Matt, take it away. So I love this question because it comes from somebody who obviously listens to the pod because he's kind of tweaking us with the question. Love it. He goes, hey, Matt and Kara, love the pod, but I don't think you guys are my friend type. That's how he starts the question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Goes, that's no it. That's- I'm sorry. That's interesting, Matt, because we're we're similar but different. So if we're neither of their type, then who? Then you know. Well, no. But listen to this. He actually pays you like a weird backhanded compliment. He goes, "No, to me, he goes, no offense. I'm in my early 30s, not ready to talk about dad stuff and mortgages. I assume that's targeted at me." Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, "Cairo doesn't seem to want any new friends." Wow, this guy's really right to the right to the, our hearts. Yeah, but now this this so he goes. However, I do have a comedian. I'm sort of obsessed with and go to his shows every year when he's in my city. I don't want to tell you who it is, but I've bought him drinks, even hung out with him pretty late into the night. How do I turn this into a real friendship? Am I, quote, Delulu? Delulu, okay. Delulu, we got a Delulu drop. Well, I mean, hmm. I mean, my first thought is you're probably a little Delulu. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you need to have something that the comedian wants, mm. which is like the next time they're in town, like, can you bring girls around? Do you know where the after party is? Do you have the hookup? Right. Right. Because otherwise, like, let's be honest, buying, buying, buying me drinks after a show because the comedian's hanging out, you bought him drinks, does he even, no offense, like, does he remember you? I don't know. Do you remember every person that bought you a drink when you're in Toledo? <laughs> So here's a, so I'm thinking about my friend, Daniel, who, you know, who I met in San Diego after a show in the, in the mid aughts. And we're still friends. I actually went to his wedding. Well, it was, it was a zoom wedding because of the pandemic. And I think that the key was in between shows. So yes, I was there. He bought me drinks. He probably took me out, but then he, you know, he wasn't like stalking me, but like he'd email me, you know, I think he he also had a t-shirt company. So maybe he was trying to help me. Like, I think you gotta be helpful. I agree with that. Um, I had a guy in Nashville uh, that I became friends with. And I had another guy in Arizona that I became friends with. The Arizona one was interestingly enough because I stayed at his place on couchsurfing.com. Oh my God. So that was the, the, the first bottom. thing I did when I got up on stage at the um, stand up live, I think it was in Phoenix. I, I told everybody about it. And then I told them his full name on stage. I was like, just in case I get murdered. <laughs> <laughs> what what is couch it's a violation of his privacy? <laughs> is it free? Yeah, it was free. This was like 10 years ago. And that's people who just want yeah. company. And then we became buddies. And then, like, you know, just every time I came into town, we hung out there. And there was another guy in Nashville. Oh, hold, hold, uh, hold on. Go back to I want to go back to couchsurfing.com. Yeah. What's the point of it? People are nice. It's for younger people. But who can't so afford you- to day i mean i think it's like give and take you know you like you like the people who give out free stuff on buy nothing 
Remember you told me it wasn't donations because there are people <laughs> uh, we're, we're for picking them up. But that's a little different. Giving away a crib you don't need is different than sleep. Strangers sleep on my couch for no money. That's a very European friendly thing. It's like, it's like hustling. No, you're in Arizona. It's not like hustling. It's very much not like hustling, Matthew, because you're not getting paid and it's your house and it's your couch. All right. Well, is it just people is it just it. for murder? Well, that's why I said the guy's name on stage because I was like, maybe I made a mistake here. But we ended thought, up becoming friends. The thought of a stranger using my bathroom. Yeah, you would you would not be the uh typical target when 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 couchsurfing.com has meetings, they go, Who's our target demo? It's not the guy who doesn't want you touching anything in his because listen, as as men, we're both we're both men. Yeah. There's no humanly possible way that you and I could take a shower anywhere, our apartment any, anywhere, and not leave some hair. Right. That's some true. Type, no, that's some, true. And it's that's hard. It's gross. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. Let's get, to, let's get back to the uh, listener question. So, look, the, the fact is, we're admitting that we've both actually made friends with yes. people that we met throughout our history in, in doing stand up. And I think if I had to do a poll of most comedians, I'm sure. Almost all of them have made a friend in the decades of being on the road because it's lonely. That's the other thing. Like we're lonely, but I do think the flip side is like just because you want to be friends with somebody again, doesn't necessarily mean they want to be friends with you just because somebody's accepting a drink from you. Doesn't mean, Hey, we're now friends just because I find this person really funny on stage that I paid to go see it doesn't mean that we're going to be friends in the same way that like, just because you like Derek Jeter's, you know, hey, I want to be friends with Derek Jeter. It doesn't mean he wants to be friends with you. So I think what you're saying is accurate. Like, what are you bringing to the table? Well, let me ask you, uh, let's go Matt on this question. Let's go, let's go deep. Why do you even want to be friends with this person? Because they're famous. It's a great, great back, back, back this, back this shit up for a second. What are we talking <laughs> What are we even talking about? Why do you right, why do you want to be friends with I'm just guessing this is like Bert Kreischer or somebody, you know? Now, and I guess if, if we back up even further, let's say this No, no, guy, they said they were early 30s. It's probably somebody younger. It's probably like Mark Norman or somebody. I've had to guess. So let's say this guy has a healthy Shane Gillis. Friend. I'm guessing it's Shane Gillis. That's probably who it is. Shane Shane Gillis seems like somebody you'd want to be friends with if you go to his, if you go, you go to his oh, I'm, I'm trying to think the other way. Would Shane Gillis give a shit about this guy? No, but I'm sure you would have a drink with him. Let's say our question asker has a healthy friend circle, good social fitness. Right. And in that respect, I think this would be, this is kind of a fun endeavor. Let's see if we get this funny, maybe c comedian, f famous guy in our circle. If the guy doesn't have friends or doesn't have close friends, then I, then I don't like this. Right. I, I like what you're saying. It's like, why do you need, why do you need this in your life? Why do you need, you need to be friends with Theo Vaughn. Like, what is that about? Right? Like, what is it about? Is it, hey, I actually think that we would hit it off. Like, we share a lot of commonalities. We share values. Because it's also a person that doesn't live in your city. Right. That's the other obvious thing. Like, wh what are we talking about here? You want a pen pal with a celebrity? Should should we mention one of our friends is incredible at going from parasocial to re regular social, and that's Fireball Adam? He is, but that's a bit of an insult to him because he's in the biz. He's not in the music biz. No, but I'm saying he's in the entertainment biz. R right. First of all, it's not an insult. I'm saying he, he was fans yeah, of the I band. Well, let's see how Fireball Adam takes it. Oh, God. Sorry, Fireball Adam. Forget I ever brought up your name. But I'm saying he's friends with musicians. Yes. Right. Who he started Who, who he started off with knowing them and they didn't know him. Yes. No, I agree. But I, I think, um, and maybe this is a lesson for our, our listeners. The way to do it is not to, um, idol, not to like, idol, how do you, how idolize. Idolize. Why am I blanking on it? Right. I, I was going to say idolatrize. To, it's to not idolize. It's to treat them like a regular person. If you really want to be friends with somebody, you don't fawn over them. Like that's not a healthy way to get into a friendship by fawning over and sucking up to somebody. I think you got to do a little bit. 
well, you can compliment and buy a shot, yeah. right? But otherwise, like, okay, let me buy you shots. Let me buy you dinner. Let me take you out. Let me show you a good time. Like, it's fun. And I agree with you. Like, if you're just doing it because you, like, think that would add to your life to be like, I love when this comic comes to my city. Like, we're boys. And you want to tell yourself you're boys? Great. How are you going to take it past that? Honestly, I, I don't I don't know that you will. Um, unless there's something beyond that that you guys have in common. You know, like. Are you pickleball players? Are you going to play pick? Maybe he wants to play pickleball during the day when he's there. Hey, maybe the next time he comes, you introduce him to a woman and it becomes his wife. I mean, you never know. Surface. Well, area. that's how you become friends. Yeah. If you introduce him to his wife, you will become friends. That's, yeah. that's the way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting though, that this guy actually doesn't seem to have the parasocial relationship that you've defined because he kind of knows he's not his friend. Right. Is it a lack of awareness that is inherent in parasocial though? I don't know. I think a lot of people are aware of their parasocial relationships. Fully aware. And they don't I don't care. think that's part of the definition. I don't think you have to be blacked out about it for it to be parasocial. Got it. But I, I think, oh, do we, do we answer this question? No, not yet. I don't no. think. Because yes, how, I... how do I turn this into a real friendship? So, you know, are we saying that that's very unlikely, but are there, you know, if you want to like figure out what the actual friendship hook is, right? Like what is, what are you offering as a friend? Not like I'm just buying you drinks. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just worried that like, I don't know that I want to be giving advice of how, I don't even know if I want to answer this. No, I agree. Look, I also, I said this from the beginning, it's probably not going to happen. It's also like, we just said, you don't really need it. There's probably not a good reason for it. It doesn't live in your city. Uh, and I'm just not sure. You have to know that they, that he's open to it too. I think stick to fandom. Fandom. There's a lot of value in fandom. Yeah, I mean it's just healthier, and yeah. also by organ by not by quote not trying. Right. He he may be like reach out to you. I mean the thing is too is you even said in the question I'm sort of obsessed with which is not a healthy framing of a potential friend. Yeah. This comedian would love that though. A comedian who's obsessed oh, with. Oh, yeah. totally, totally, totally. Do you, do you ever meet uh, someone and they quote like a stand up joke to you and you don't even remember doing that joke and you're like, damn, oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. No, that's, it's incredible. Like, there was a yeah. guy, I went to a show last night and there was a guy who was like, I saw you at the show here a month ago. You were great. I'm like, Oh, amazing. So nice. You know, like I wasn't oh, even yeah. performing on that show. I'm like, oh, awesome. Uh, so are you Delulu? You're not Delulu because you asked the question. So you're not Delulu because just by virtue of the fact that you asked the question and you're aware and you said, I'm obsessed, you're not Delulu. Uh, you're just doing something that may not be in your best interest. And I'm not sure that it's going to be in the comics best interest either. So, uh, keep it to fame. Especially when the comic ends up dead somewhere. We're like, well. You don't want to be involved. You don't want to be involved. Yeah. But listen, keep doing what you're doing. Have drinks with him. Have fun with him. That sounds like a fun thing that he's open to every year with you. And and I think, Matt, we should add, please continue supporting live comedy. We love that. Yes. And come to our show when we're in your city. And I'll have a drink with you. Cairo will definitely. I will have a drink for you if you make an overture. Yeah. I will parry it. Okay. Because I want people to know where they stand. Matt will get your phone. Matt will give you his phone number and he probably will text you back. Yeah, I'll probably text you back. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I'm like, I want this parasocial thing to, to morph into Matt, more. Matt, you're going to be the first uh, uh, a public figure to a parasocial relationship the other way. The other way. What are you doing? What's this guy? What's Jim doing? <laughs> I already, I already, he's, he's got a, a new Costco card. Oh, this guy's like, yeah, this comedian won't stop hitting me up. Yeah, he want he wants to know what like what museums I've been to lately. Matt will Matt will uh, 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 come up with the first reverse parasocial relationship. Reverse para, I'm a reverse para. Oh, uh, okay, so I think we answered it. All right, guys, that was asking for a friend. If you have a question, send it to us on Instagram, and we will answer it on the show. All right, Matt, else what what else we got? Well, I just wanted to ask. You know, now we're in. We didn't discuss the reality TV element of it all because now I think it's a lot more blurred because like it was clear you're not supposed to be friends with Tom Cruise or whatever, you know, like that's right. not happening. But now it's just like, especially if you live in LA, like what you're talking about, like everywhere you go, there's some like love is blind contestant 
that you knew beforehand, like, is it okay to then become their friend if you have kind of seen them before? Like, I, I feel like it's okay to become friends with somebody, even though you had a parasocial relationship. If they're just like a regular person, though, what do you mean you them before? like you watch them. Um, I'm saying what you're talking about, like you said, parasocial to social, like, can you go, I think you can, if they're like, if you're just being right, normal with them, like you, you meet them in your neighborhood or you meet them at coffee or you meet them at the gym, you can form the relationship in the same normal way. Sure. I mean, if you, if some player on the Dodgers moves in next door, like you can be friends with them. Um, right. That's what I'm saying. Like I have a bunch of friends that are pretty prominent actors, but like, met through dad world. Do I like it a little more that they're, you know, well-known and I've seen them on TV? Sure. I'm yeah. Not gonna lie. Yeah, of course. Enjoy that. But do we have I mean, a genuine friendship? I think we do actually. Yeah. I think that they also can smell, sniff that out. Well, that was the other thing about the listener question too. It's like the other person, the, the celeb in the equation has had this happen to them their entire life. Right. Their entire public life. So they probably have a good, good, what you're saying, a good parado paradar. Yeah, they have pa 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 paradar. Paradar, yeah. damn it. What? Every time I try and do one of these, what was the other one the other day? It was like, paradar. Oh, it was, uh, it was, it was well, we'll talk about it offline. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I think, again, to, I guess, to my point, you just have to think, like, do you even want, do you want to be friends with the person? Okay. Like if you didn't know they were on selling sunset or whatever, you know, great. I mean, you just got to be in it for the right reasons. Yeah. And then you'll can be fine. We, can we talk about why this is happening though? And the article talked about this. I just think it's yeah. a symptom of our lonely age, our isolation, our age of isolation that, that we're looking so hard at non friends for friendship. We're looking towards non acquaintances, non work buddies, non Gym buddies, like instead of looking towards actual targets to cultivate friendships, we're looking at the comedian who comes into town once a year. We're looking at the selling sunset person. Like, what are we doing? I mean, I also think we probably think their lives are so much glamorous and better than they are. Yeah. You know? And we now know for sure, having met a lot of these people, that is entirely untrue. What, what, yeah, just that, that sort of envy. And it's, it's just, it's not, it's not, it's not healthy. It's not healthy. Even if it's not a celebrity, it's just, it, it's just, it, you're basically describing Instagram, you know, it's like, right. Right. why do I want to see the best part of someone's life? Yeah. So I think, I think ultimately what I'm trying to say is it's okay to have fandom. Fandom's great. I think it's great. And I think it's good to be super fans. I think it's okay to be a, like obsessive super fan. I don't think it should ever um, replace or interfere with your time or emotional commitments to actual friends. Yes. Non-famous, non-parasocial. That should be your, your primary. Oh, and there was one other thing. I, I don't know if you're going to mention it, Matt. Making friends through parasocial relationships. Well, I love that, right? Hey, there you go. You both have a common trait. You're both stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you people met outside the Free Britney protests. Yeah, totally. But I do think like, hey, you go to the podcast together. Like the people who went to our live show became friends. It's great. You know, people hanging out oh, yeah. afterwards in the lobby. I'm sure the people who go to the, the Crooked Media, you know, tours and the Giggly Squad tours become friends because they have mutual fandom. Well, this is funny about the Grateful Dead book I was reading. So they did this thing where they would set people up in the same section who were single. They were doing tickets pre-Ticketmaster. They had their own system. So they they knew who was coming to the shows and they would set people up. A lot of people got married at Dead shows who they set up in the same seat. That's incredible. Yeah, isn't that cool? We still, after almost two years of, of potting, have not figured out the name of our, fan, our fandom. Mm. Because those right. people are going to become friends. I know. I know. Well, we saw it at the live show, actually. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have come from. Oh, this is what I wanted to add before we go. Yeah. Or a question for you. Like, I think it's healthy to have one. Everybody should have one parasocial, you know, super fan. They're obsessed with. Do you have one? 
Not really. And in fact, this is, you're going to find this strange. Uh, I have like a cringe about hero worship and super fandom. Like this is going to be really, I've never told you this. If I'm like, if I'm watching like a documentary or, or, or a, uh, a game, when everyone crowds around the baseball player to get their autograph, I, I, I can't, I can't watch it. I don't, I don't know why. I don't think like, it's weird. And I guess we definitely have never talked about this because we share that 100%. Really? People ask me who my favorite comic is and I'm disgusted by the notion that they think that I would ever put anyone above me at any way. Music, <laughs> movies, actors, athlete. Like I, I, I never, ever, I just not how I view the world. Like when I'm, I'm even like, and, and I think you're going to a concert tonight. I, I feel weird being at a concert. I don't want to be in the audience. I don't like going to audience. I don't like being Jen Pa. I don't like being the right. Audience. Well, cause we were both meant to be famous. That's where we're on our arc towards fame. The arc oh. of justice bends towards us being only on the stage. That's interesting. I, I don't know if I ever put two and two. Cause obviously I don't mind being on the stage, but. I don't know, just like people obsessing over celebrities and like taking pictures of, I mean, I, I will take a picture of a celebrity cause it's, cause it's, you know, good for Instagram, but I don't, I don't like hero worship. I, I can't, I can't look. I mean, we're in the minority, but I, I'm with you on that. Like now, you, we've you know, alienated, now we've alienated all of our fans. It's interesting. It happens in for concerts a team sport, like watching a professional soccer game and cheering that I'm sort of okay with, but like everyone singing along to a musician, I'm kind of like, what are we in a cult? Well, I was thinking about this cause I'm a dad now. Like, Oh, you're a dad now. All right. Well, you know, my, my, my dad, my dad texts me every time you say that and he goes, what's wrong with Matt? Kids getting autographs. I say it always for a reason. There's always a reason behind it. It's not just thrown into your face. Um, I was just thinking like, autograph seeking, you know, that, that seems oh. harmless for kids. So I'm like, am I going to encourage that or not? Cause like, it seems like it's a light thing that is fun for a, a father and son to do, but I do know an adult who does it. And I find that very, very creepy. Uh, they're called graphers. Huh. Did you know that? I didn't know they were called graphers. No, they're called graphers. There's a crew of adult men uh, who like will bully kids out of the way or pimp them out that not their children to get the autographs they need to sell. Yeah. Oh yeah. I also like for the athlete when they're walking out, like it's, they're, they're, they're like mob. It seems pretty annoying to be honest. I mean, I know they're yeah. rich and famous, but yes, when you're leaving a game and you're sweaty and you have to stick around for another 20 minutes, but I mean, you're getting $30 million as part of it. Yeah. I guess part that's, that's part of it, but yeah, I don't know. There's some. Gl I'm so glad that we've discussed this because well, I don't usually talk about it because it sounds egotistical, I guess, or narcissistic or something. I've always felt like I don't want to share that with people. That's just how I feel when people are like, "Hey, do you want to go to this thing?" I'm like, "Eh." Like people always ask me if I want to go. To, I'm like, just so I want but the audience hears this. I never ever want to go to another comedian show ever in my life. Yeah, that I I agree, but maybe. Yeah, because for me, it's half the time I'm like, I'm better than him or her. And half the time I'm like, oh, no, they're better than me. Well, I just am about I don't like being in the audience. Right. But 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 what if someone asks you to go to a concert? No, I go. But I'm just saying in general, the, the idea of what you're talking about, of like hero. Where I love music, so I'll, I'll do it for the music, but not for the hero yeah. worship of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I don't love going to stand up shows like in the uh, in the audience as well. It's really it's yeah. weird. But it's you like, guys should all go. But our listeners should always go. Well, yeah, our shows are also kind of interactive, so it's less like you're a one-way show. I agree. No, I agree. Well, listen, we're making it way more fun for the audience. To I mean, their audience, audience is coming up on the stage. If anything, they're getting the hero worship. We're turning them into celebrities. <laughs> we're turning our audience into celebrities. Um. All right. On that note, Matt, what do we learn today? Nothing. Oh, come on. <laughs> Listen, we learned we all have parasocial. Everybody's got these parasocial relationships. There's nothing wrong with them as long as they're not affecting your real friendships. That's my that's my short takeaway. 
Yeah, I was almost going to say the exact same thing, which is just check yourself a little bit. Like, do you have healthy IRL social fitness? And if you do, a little power here and there is not bad. But if you're like devoted to this person who doesn't know you exist, I mean, would you do that for a romantic partner? No. Yeah. And I don't really know what's behind wanting to convert them into real friendships. Well, you know, if you could be friends with the lead singer of, of Bush, would you? I don't know. <laughs> okay. If you were friends with Dave Matthews, you wouldn't think that was fun? Mm. No. What about like Daryl Strawberry? That's a whole other story. We get well, into okay. together. Right. We, 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 we could get in some trouble together, me and Daryl. No, he's sober now, so forget him. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> guys, let us know what parasocial relationships you have. Thank you so much for, for listening. Always remember, be good to yourself. Be good to your friends. Love you, buddy. Love you, buddy.